Hey everyone, welcome back to Viewpoint. So today, we are going to, well, finally build it. Right, so first off, I'm going to um, disassemble most of the parts, if not all of the parts that's inside the PC, so that I could replace them and rewire them with the new parts that I've got. Alright, so yeah, let's do it. Let's do it then. Alright. So yeah, so that's the Wi-Fi adapter, the GTX 1060, the, this is the stock fan that came with the AMD Ryzen 2400G, the two sticks of 8GB DDR4 RAM from Team Group, um, the DVD writer as I mentioned before, and yeah you can see that it's ketchup and mustard cables from the FSP FSP Hyper K 600 watt power supply unit. Oh, this this is an extension, a cable extension, guys. Is um, I got this when I was building my current PC. Yeah, so I had extension cables for that. And yeah, this is just some extra ones that I haven't that I didn't use it, so I just use it for you know for this for this build. So yeah. All right. To start off, I'm going to remove the GPU and the Wi-Fi adapter. The CPU and the motherboard 28 pin and 8 pin connectors. I'm gonna disconnect them a bit later. First, I'm gonna unscrew the motherboard from the from the PC case. cemented to the to the CPU guys because of the thermal piece. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys something. You guys see it? This, the spread heater, I think it's broken. Okay, so I'm gonna clean out the CPU. 
All right. Sure the edges are clean. Yeah. Okay, I think the edges are all clean. Okay. And you can get see the golden tint. They are still golden. Right there. Eh? Alright, okay. That's it. I'm gonna keep this back later. It's out. The next thing that needs to get out will be the power supply unit. This, uh, why is the battery not attaching? Because we had to remove the retention uh, screws. So yeah, now we're gonna attach back the retention screws. Let's make it guys. Screw back the retention screws. Alright, and the back plate is also well, I mean the CPU back plate, not the whole motherboard back plate, but yeah. Alright, all being attached back, time to put it back inside the box. that we got with the 3500 Ryzen AMD 3500 and the fan that we've got with the 2400G are they identical? well yeah they are as you can see the thickness of the of the aluminum fins yeah they are the same they're literally the same just that the box is bigger for the 2400G whereas it's slimmer for the 3500 Oh, that's the only difference. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> cable management is not my forte, guys. But now I have to remove every single cable, and of course detach them from the um, hard drive that I have. Like I think I only have SSDs here, so you have to remove the cables from the SSDs. Okay.
Tables are becoming more obsolete as the years gone by. I don't think modern fans nowadays are powered by modern technology. Hopefully not. I already forgot what kind of fans I'm using with the card PC. So yeah. As you guys can see, this is a non-modular power supply so all the cables are pre-assigned already so yeah and those are ketchup and mustard cables you can see that put this back in the box Okay, so I'm also trying to install um, this Corsair dual SSD mounting bracket. Okay, what does this do is that um, for a single mounting bracket for your hard disk drive which is bigger in size, you install it on that mounting bracket and then you would have additional two mounting brackets for your solid state drive which is, you know, more. So by sacrificing one mounting bracket for your hard disk drive, you get two mounting brackets for your solid state drive. So that's what I'm going to do right now because all these are all solid state drives. So yeah. So what I like about this case is they have this, um, I'm not sure what's the right word for it, um, hot swappable. So you can actually like just, you know, take it out, pinch this too and you can just take it out or put it in. Pretty easy actually to be honest. Um, and very very user friendly. So that's like I, I, I like this. So now, we can install two solid state drives in a single hard disk drive bracket. Yeah. You can buy this kind of adapters a lot online. This is just from Corsair. Okay, so... I'm doing this because I want to use one of the slots for a, an actual hard disk drive. Because, you see, solid state drives, even though it is faster than hard disk drives, for example, if you buy an 8TB SSD and 8TB hard disk drive, the cost for a solid state drive at 8TB is going to be way over. Yeah, so hard disk drives are actually still usable because the uh, it's very much affordable at larger memory size. Yeah. So that's how I remove this. Oh, 
should screw in this first before I put it here. Oh no. Okay. Right. We learn as we go through, guys. We learn as we go through. TP link. Pretty good actually, just plug and play. So, yeah, do not need any kind of software at all. Even though I think they still do include a driver CD. Yeah. But you don't need it at all. Guys, been waiting for the installment of the new motherboard. Okay. The new CPU, guys. As usual, you can see there is a. I think you can't see pretty much, but on the top, on this side, you can see that. That's my thumb there. Yeah, the there's a golden arrow very small golden arrow so golden arrow with a triangle arrow down in the socket so you guys the camera really can't, can't see that much but yeah oh, in other words if you guys wonder how to install one just remember the name Ryzen face towards this way towards your towards your right so Ryzen the name Ryzen face towards your right side right so I'm gonna use the Corsair RAM Corsair is 293 MHz in terms of the maximum uh, RAM speed and it is CL16. So yeah. put in you see this is what you call the CPU fan connector so find where is the nearest CPU fan and attach the wire first so that at least you can cable manage this before you you know figure out how to put this onto your motherboard so yeah let me see where is the Don't do it on the cardboard, guys. Because it 
keep on flexing downwards and the screws don't get to interact with you know, the back plate. So if the screws don't get to interact with the back plate, you can't screw it in. Notice um, there's only six screws, I mean, sorry, six turnoffs because the previous motherboard was shorter, I mean, was smaller. So the X, no, sorry, the B450 Aorus Pro Wi Fi is actually longer. So now we need to install one, two, and three. Three more turnoffs, right? I think we have some turnoffs in the previous box, so I'm gonna get it now. You can see the golden ones, those are the standoffs, so I'm gonna put that on.
so yeah i got this from the gigabyte website and yeah they have the breakdown of the different um sorry was it not focusing they have the breakdown of the various uh front panel connectors that we need to connect to the motherboard so i'm just gonna follow this all right That's the audio, audio cable. Focus, focus. And this audio cable. And then it's the USB 2.0, USB 3.0, and of course the front panel connectors. Yeah.
right guys so okay I finally connect the PC via HDMI to one of my monitors here okay and my monitor is plugged in it's powered up at the same time the PC itself also plugged in by power all the way down there so I haven't turned it on guys okay but the thing is I don't have any keyboard or mouse connected to the PC but the thing is if it works it should be able to go to the login page at least because I've not touched anything regarding the Windows software or anything regarding uh, login pages or something like that so once it's turned on this screen should go to the login page I hope let's see you guys ready? let's do this okay I'm gonna turn on I think that's turn on okay and then let's press the button okay press the button okay ready three two one Oh, what is it? <laughs> this is this. Oh, I just saw a light. If you guys didn't see that, okay, let's try again. Three, two, one. Oh, okay. All right. So let's see. Let's see if anything pops up. I mean, it looks nice. <laughs> even even the Aura's logo is actually lighter. It looks nice. Oh, it is nice. Oh, yeah, that is nice. Okay, let's see all the fans are working. Yep, fans are working. Those are only white LED lights, guys. Yeah, it's not RGB, just white. Uh, okay. All right. Okay, at least all the lights are working. I mean, and also all the fans are working. So, power is going through them pretty well. Oh, 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 look at this. It's loading. It's loading. Okay, it takes a while, I guess. It's two minutes, no, one minute in. One minute in so far. And if it goes to the login page, that means this thing works. Please go to the login page. Please go to the login page. Okay. At least it didn't freeze. Oh, okay. At least it didn't freeze. Oh, getting devices ready. Okay. Oh, this is so exciting, guys. So exciting. Oh no. Come on, come on. You can do it. By the way, guys, this is 100% real. I am not doing this on a second try. It is the first try. If it works, it works. Okay. It's still at 76%. Sorry, it's still at 76%. Why 76? And it's still stuck there. I mean, but the, but the loading circle is still moving. So I'm guessing it's not stuck. But I'm guessing at least it's not freezing. Everything works fine so far. Fans are all spinning. It's all power received. This this actually looks way more nicer than the previous build because the previous the Asus Prime B350 Plus the motherboard is not black in color. It was somewhat in red, reddish brown or something like that. So it's really really it doesn't blend in with the whole PC case. But this, this motherboard is black. They're using a black PCB, so that's why it looks way more nicer. You guys can see it. Look at that. It looks way more nicer. Man. It's still at 76%. Okay, I think this takes some time to recognize all this. There's actually three storage units in this PC. One of them, um, the Kingston brand, has the Windows software. The other two is just for normal storage. Oh, look at that. 
I'm, I'm, I'm gonna clean that dust off. Why didn't you clean it before? <laughs> no. Okay. So, all the cables are good. All the cables are good. Um, maybe I need to pull, pull this cable a bit outwards to the other side. There's too much of it here, so yeah. I would say this will be a budget build for 2020, although the graphics card is a bit way outdated. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if you want a graphics card that would work much better than a 1060, it will be a 1660 for budget. I like the fact that the there's an RGB on the chipset, like that. Yeah, it looks nice. Okay. Alright, um, let's see. Still at 76% and it's already 5 minutes in guys. It's 5 minutes in and still at 76%. Okay, I'll, I'll get back to you guys in a short while. Hey y'all. Okay, so... Um, somehow... The, the, the PC just re auto readjusted itself. In terms of screen resolution, because you can see the Oros logo shrunk in terms of um, its width, um, not, not its width, its size. Yeah, it shrunk actually. And there's no more 76%. So, sorry, sorry for the shaking, guys. So, yeah, it's still getting ready. Okay. I'll, I'll see you all guys again once it put up to the at least the Windows page, okay? Hey y'all, welcome back. So, apparently guys, it worked on the first try. No, I'm not, I'm not kidding, it is on the first try. Um, well, it seems there's no error, no blue screen of death at the login page. Um, yeah, but you know, we're, we're not sure about that. Uh, I mean, Sandra will have to try it in the next few months and see if the error pops up again. If it does, I really think it might be the storage unit. Otherwise, it's working fine. Although, uh, yeah. So I don't, I don't have any guesses as to which part might actually be faulty that that caused the error in the first place. So, I mean, likelihood I think it will be the motherboard, most likelihood. But in any case, we finally did it. Yeah. So I'm going to put all the tempered glass panel and the back panel. Okay. Um, make the wires a bit more prettier and also put back the DVD writer. Yeah. Go, go, go.